Welcome back. My wife has a great message today. She's going to be talking about angels. The angels of God. The angels are all around. Amen. Amen. And, and, camp and, around about God's and, people. and I think we're just going to dive right in. Let my wife have it. Praise God. Well, I'm just going to cover a small part of what the Bible um, says about angels. And mostly this part that I'm covering is what I've experienced in, in my life. And I was going to Amen. share some other uh, visitations of angels that others have also shared. And first of all, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7, that's Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Make sure you read this. Um, you can jot it down and save it for reading afterwards. Yeah. But this is what it says in Hebrews 1, 7. It says, and of his angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits a flame of fire? Hallelujah. In Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So angels are sent to minister to those that, that are Christians or that are going to be Christians. Well, how's God know he knows, okay? We are not to worship angels. The Bible tells us that we worship the Lord your God and him only Amen. shall you serve. In fact, angels worship Jesus. They That's worship right. God. Um, it says in Hebrews 1, 6, the second half of that verse says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Amen. So the angels of God don't, uh, we don't worship the angels of God. They worship God, yeah. and we worship God. Hallelujah. In Psalms chapter 91, that is a good prayer for you to pray over yourself every day. Um, Psalms 91 verses 9 through 12 is what we're going to reflect on today. It says, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. Wow, that's protection. Amen. Did you notice what it said here? It says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Okay. Amen. We are to pray this over ourselves and confess God's word over ourselves. Amen? The just shall live by faith. That's Amen. right. We are to confess this over ourselves. The world was spoken into existence. God spoke the world into existence. He, he wants us to speak by faith, with faith believing in Jesus' name. Amen. And when we speak by faith, we speak God's word, and we stand on it and believe it to be true. Call those things which be not as though they are. Amen. And yep. for when we do this, when we believe this, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Yeah. Hallelujah. The angels hearken unto the word of the Lord. Amen, they do. That's right. When we pray God's word, the angels get busy. Amen. Amen. And in fact, um, let me see where, well, anyway, I have that verse written down that you just said. We'll get to it. And we'll get to it in a minute. But anyway, it says, <clears throat> in their hands, angels' hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. In, ver in Psalms 34, verse 7, it says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Praise God. Otherwise, God's angels protect and guard those people that strong that believe in God 
and they strongly honor and respect God. That's what those that fear him mean. Yeah. That fear is not, oh, we're afraid, but it's very strong honor and respect of God that you're serving. Yeah. You know, there's been times, uh, Susie and I, we've just been here, you know, by herself, uh, maybe had a night or something. I had to just kind of stop and look around. But sometimes I just sense the stirring of angels, you know. Praise God. Oh, man. I, glory to God. I'm going to have to lay hands on somebody. And, and what does it? Psalm 34 7. Let's say that again. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. He doesn't pull up stakes. That's right. They're, they're around us all the time. Uh, we don't see them usually. Occasionally we'll see them. Sometimes we we know that it's an angel we're seeing, and sometimes we don't. You don't know. We don't know. Uh, and so, uh, oh, here's uh, Psalms 103, verse 20. It says that God's angels do his commandments, hear his word, and fulfill God's word. That's where that is. Amen. God's angels fulfill his word. So when you're praying God's word, that's one of the reasons why it's so important when you're praying to also pray God's word because the angels perform his word. Angels all around. Amen. They're always there. And um, Hebrews, let me read a few more scriptures yeah. about angels. I hope you're jotting this down. Maybe you can play it again if you're not. But jot this down and read it, and then we're going to give some examples of angel real, sightings. Real, real life. <laughs> real life angel sightings. Personal he, real life. Amen. We'll give some examples in the Bible and some examples in real life. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 2, it, it says, Do not neglect to show hospitality for some have entertained angels without realizing it. Wow. So let's be good to people. <laughs> There's more than one. God wants us to show love and be good to people. But another reason we show love and we're good to people is because you might be entertaining an angel without realizing it. Amen. Because angels can appear any way they want. They can appear like people. Yeah, and yes, sometimes they do appear to people in their glory. Sometimes they look like humans. But other times they look just like you you and me, because, um, and that's why people entertain angels without realizing Unaware, it. yeah. Unaware, yes. Um, okay, let's talk about some biblical examples first okay. of angel appearances. All throughout the Old and New Testament, we have examples of angel appearances. And uh, in Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 27, the Bible talks about the apostles. Some of the apostles were thrown into prison one time, and the Sanhedrin called, called the guards to bring them the next morning, and they weren't in jail. They, they, the, law, the jail was locked securely, and they were not there. Guess where they found them? <laughs> they were preaching in the temple. The apostles were preaching in the temple because angels came during the night and released them. Amen. And, and then it, there's a story about Peter in the book of Acts. In um, Acts chapter 12, verses 5 through 17, Peter was in prison. Yeah. And Herod, Herod had had... James, the brother of John, executed, and, there, and a lot of the Jewish leaders liked it so much, he decided he was going to imprison Peter and have him executed. Well, guess what happened? Um, the church was praying that God would release Peter Amen. and spare his life, and it wasn't time yet for Peter to go. There's a time appointed and a man wants to die, and then the judgment. It wasn't Peter's time. Amen. And the church was praying. And Peter was sleeping soundly, and, and uh, you go back and read the story yourself. I'm just telling it to you right, right. now. But the angel came, and, and Peter was so, such at peace and trusting God that the angel had to put, you know, 
Peter, Peter thumped him up. a few times Kick to wake him, him up. Bit. Get up. Yeah, and and Peter was sleeping between guards. Soundly. Soundly, and he was chained. And in peace. <laughs> and an angel came and delivered him and brought him out of the prison. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he wasn't executed that day. No. And so um, there's also in the Old Testament, angels appeared. And one time an angel appeared to Samson. Some of you have heard about the story of Samson. Yeah. Well, before his mom uh, was pregnant with him, an angel came and visited her. Did you know that? It didn't just happen to Mary in the New Testament. An angel came and visited um, Samson's mom. And then, then later his mom and dad and gave them instructions and told her she was going to get pregnant. Yeah. And this gave him instructions that he was to be a Nazarite even while she was pregnant with him. Yeah. What's a Nazarite? That's someone that's made a special <clears throat> commitment to God not to drink any alcoholic beverages, not to cut their hair, um, you know, to keep themselves from sexual sin yeah. and all kinds of things. And so they visit, this angel visited and told a prophecy, prophesied to him about yeah. Samson. Yeah. And so, and, and of course, the, the angel Gabriel, not all the angels in the Bible, there's only two that I know of that, that gave their names. But there's yeah. more angels than oh, the yeah, angel yeah. Gabriel. There's angel Michael too, but the angel yeah. Gabriel is the one that appeared and announced Christ's coming birth to Mary the Virgin Mary. He also, the angel Gabriel, appeared to John the Baptist's father, Amen. And Zacharias. I, yeah. I kind of like that angel sitting on the, the rolled away tombstone. When Jesus rose from the said, dead. Yo, I'm Gabriel. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> well, well. I don't know. If, he didn't say his name. No, he didn't say We don't know that that was Gabriel. My I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But there was angels and, that were at and the an tomb. earthquake at that. Yes, when Jesus yeah. rose from the dead, there was angels there. Yes, and then um, the Bible says that an angel of God closed the lion's mouth when Daniel was thrown into yeah. the lion's den. Ever felt like you've been in the lion's den? <sighs> well, it's not too fun to get thrown into the lion's den, but no. God closed the uh, mouths of the lions and they usually whenever someone was thrown in the lion's den they kept those lions kind of hungry oh yeah and so they would be the people would be killed before they even hit the floor the floor but but daniel was fine because the angel closed the lion's mouth Amen. hallelujah so those are several of them in the bible there's more more but many more but like we said, I'm not going to cover every single detail and every single thing about it, but, um, but I am going to talk about angels. But anyway, let's talk. I'm going to talk about two different times in my life that I saw, physically saw angels. There's been several times where I saw them in the spirit. That means I saw them by the eye of, eyes of faith or by a vision. But I physically saw angels at least two times that I know of in my life. I imagine I probably saw them a lot more, but I didn't realize it. Right. I mean, one time, one situation was I was in the hospital and I was seriously ill and had to have emergency surgery. But before the surgery, I was being wheeled off by an orderly on a stretcher, wheeled off to the x-ray room. Well, it was a long way or so it seemed to the x-ray room. And it was a big hospital in Tulsa. And, I mean, they were going around the bins and, and it was on, I don't know, it was probably in the basement. I don't remember. I don't really know. But this orderly, I don't know if he was new or couldn't see very well or what, but he was banging me against every against every turn he made, he yeah. was banging me against the wall. And it would just make me have excruciating pain. I was already in pain, oh, yeah. but every time he banged me against the wall, I just, oh my word, the pain was so bad. Yeah. And I was praying quietly. I said, God, please help me. 
send an angel to help me send send someone or send an angel to help me and and pretty quickly after that this woman walks up and she took the gurney at the at the foot of the gurney and she guided it all the way to the x-ray yeah. department all the way she just took the end of it and guided it the orderly was still there but she would not allow that to be bumped into the wall again and then when we got to x-ray she said this is where i have to leave yeah and she left and the whole time i was thinking this is an angel god sent me an angel this is an angel that's what she felt within herself that's right? how i felt the whole time and then when they were through taking x-rays another orderly came that wasn't banging me against the walls <laughs> so I know I'm I really I know that was an angel and then another time years ago when I was young and and I wouldn't advise people to do this I I was I was driving late at night to go to a friend of mine a girlfriend of mine's house to spend the night and um, it was raining out and yeah. yes it probably wasn't wise I probably just should have stayed home but anyway like I said I was very young and I was driving out there late at night and I took a sharp turn, too sharp of a turn on an exit. And uh, there was this huge exit sign. The last I knew I was going to hit it. All of a sudden I found myself in a ditch in the van. The van was upright and some man had seen me go off and he ran down, wanted to know if I was okay. And I just, I was kind of in shock. I just kept, and I wasn't hurt. I wasn't harmed at all, and I kept saying, where did the sign go? Because I was supposed to hit the sign, but I didn't. Well, uh, to make a long story short, this, a gentle, he, this gentleman tried to drive the van out of this, this really deep um, ditch. ditch where the, the van had landed, <laughs> and he couldn't do it. He said, I'm sorry, it's too steep. I can't get the right momentum. He couldn't get it out. So we were sitting there waiting for a tow truck to come. And I didn't even have any money. I was thinking, how on earth am I going to pay for this tow truck? <laughs> and then this other man pulls up and he walks up to me. And, and I know this man was an angel. I just knew it. He was wearing a Coors <laughs> hat. I kept thinking, God, you have an angel wearing a Coors hat. Okay, <laughs> you know, he's wearing Coors and, and he got in the van. He hardly said anything. He said, here, let me, let me get it out for you. And he just got in the van slowly, like in slow motion, drove it out of the steep embankment. And the other person, that, the other guy that was with me kept saying, he, he doesn't have momentum. He can't get that out of there. And I just... I knew he was going to drive it out. I said, yes, he's going to drive it out of there. He just just slowly drove it out it of there. It was a real Rocky Mountain high moment. Yes. Amen. <laughs> anyway, that's the second time I saw an angel that I know of yeah. uh, with my physical eyes. Anyway, so God <laughs> sends angels to us to help us. And like I said, I'm going to keep saying this because I know people that get obsessed with angels. We're not to get obsessed with angels. Yeah. We don't worship angels. We worship Jesus. We don't worship angels. No. And anyway, and I want to tell um, another story um, of an angel um, was on. I don't know if y'all, if anyone ever watched, there was an old show that used to be on called It's a Miracle. And yeah. um, so I'm, if you ever, if you want to go back and see if you can find this, I know it has it in YouTube. You can look it up and find it. But um, there's this old show called It's a Miracle, and this was a true story that happened. This woman was a single mom. She had a new job. Uh, she had two kids, two young boys. They were maybe six and seven years old. <clears throat> It was Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. Her job didn't, since she hadn't been there long enough, her job didn't pay her, you know, to be off for Thanksgiving weekend. She didn't have any money. She hadn't been paid yet. She had no, she had 
three hot dogs, three wieners, three hot dogs in her house, in her refrigerator. That is all she had. She didn't have anything else yeah. for Thanksgiving Day or for the whole weekend. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So she was trying to stay positive and for her boy's sake. And she, um, she took them to the park and so they could have a fun time. And she roasted <clears throat> those three hot dogs, one for each of them. Yeah. And they played for a while. At the, they ate the hot dogs. They played for a while at the park. And they were walking home and they kept telling her how hungry she, they were. Well, that breaks a mama's heart. And she'd kind of been praying all day, God, what do I do? Please help us. What do I do? And she got, they got home. They were walking up the stairs to an apartment. And this little old lady walks out of her apartment on the ground floor. And this apartment had been empty. And she thought, oh, someone must have moved in. This lady walked out and said, honey, I've been waiting for you all day. I have, I have a wonderful Thanksgiving prepared for you and your sons. Come on in. And she'd never met this woman before. This woman was a stranger to her, but she felt like it was safe. So they went in. The house was just, she felt such a peace in that house. That woman, for some reason, had all of their favorite Thanksgiving dishes. And it's not always something that you have for Thanksgiving. Um, they, she loved, she loved potato salad. Yeah. This woman had a potato salad there. You know, the boys had certain things they liked. She had food for them, their favorite food there. And her too. And, and you know, they had a turkey and green bean casserole, you know, all these goodies there. Everything. Uh, baked beans, all kinds of good stuff. And. So they ate and ate till they couldn't eat any more. And this, she said this woman knew things about her. She, she goes, how is your job at the doctor's office? How do you like working there? And she goes, well, how did you know I worked at the, at the doctor's office? She said, oh, I just know. And they had just a wonderful, uh, glorious time there. Before they left, the woman, the little old lady, packed up all the food that was left. Yeah. I mean, they, she had containers and containers full of leftovers, Thanksgiving yeah. leftovers. So she, they went back, and she was thinking, oh, thank you, Lord, for all you blessed us for, you know. And here she thought it, was, it started out to be a horrible, horrible day that they were going to starve, and, and they had all this food. So anyway, she put the food in her own bowls and washed up the bowls, and she was taking down the containers to take them back to the little old lady downstairs the next morning. The apartment was empty. No one was yeah. living there. She looked in the windows. There was nothing, not a stick of furniture, nothing there. And so she went and asked the manager of the apartment, she said, what happened to that sweet little old lady that was living in 117 or whatever the apartment number was? And he looked at her and he said, that apartment's been empty for six weeks. No one has lived in there. She goes, but you don't understand. We had Thanksgiving there, and that guy just kind of looked at her like she was crazy and missing a marble or something. Yeah. <laughs> and and so, but anyway, God bless her. That was an angel. Yeah. That gave to her. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, I just wanted to share. God sends angels to bring us news to bring us comfort. He sends angels uh, when we're in a tight spot yeah. or when we need encouragement. And God, that is another good way God ministers to us. Yeah. He said, you know, there's many ways he ministers to us, but that is one of the ways. He, he rescues people from danger. There's, anyway, God is so good. And I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Did you have any more? No, that, that's about it. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I liked, and um, we've all probably encountered angels unaware, you know, that you didn't realize you were. But uh, I just want to say before closing that Jesus is coming. Uh, 
it's just rapture is saturating the atmosphere around me. Amen. You know, I, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, we'll probably have a bunch of angels come getting us out of here. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yes, amen. In the, so, tw in the twinkling of an eye. Stay in God's word. Read His word. Stay in prayer. Keep telling people about Jesus. Uh, there's there's stuff coming to this earth like the earth has never seen before. Amen. And we're at the very start and the beginning of it all. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Fill them with hope. Fill them with health. Fill them with supernatural strength, O oh God. And if any one of them needs to become born again, save them to the uttermost. Lord, when we are weak and weary, help us to remember from where our hope truly comes. By your grace, keep us from misplacing our faith in worldly things for support. Strengthen us to endure all hardships with confidence, knowing every promise you made will come true. We ask you would rise within each of us and empower us to live better and never bitter. Amen. Be our shalom peace. Keep us within your secret place, high above all turmoils of life. Be God our healer. We ask when we are sick, you would saturate each of us with the healing balm of Gilead, causing us to be free from all pain and sickness. Be God our deliverer and free us from all bondages and evil of this world. We ask you would always restore, renew, and revive each of us all the days of our lives 
be our strength when we're feeling we cannot go on. Free us from the weight of all worry and fear. Give us rest from the struggles we daily encounter that are wearing us down. We will remember that you, Lord, are with us. You are here. You are powerful. And you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope in you because you are our hope. Though the world may be falling apart all around us, we will yet praise your name. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God will always be our wraparound shield all the days of our lives. You are our Savior. You are our God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we can always turn to you and find peace. Be our peace today and always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we will believe by faith that all these things are done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified. And it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and forgiving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen.